Sinister Babysitter My name is Brian. This terrible incident happened to me when I was nine years old. At that time, I was just a little child that could not understand anything. My school holidays were going on those days. My parents wanted to go to Paris for outings and fun, but my father did not want to take me with them. That day, my father was talking to my mother that I was still very young. If we take him along, we'll not be able to enjoy it in Paris. Then my mother called her sister Janet and said, Janet, can you come here to my house in two days to take care of Brian? Because both of us are going to Paris for a week on outings. But she refused because she was busy in her job for the next six days, and she advised my mother to hire a babysitter for me for a few days. My mother told my father about Janet's advice. He said, that is a brilliant idea. He instantly called someone, maybe it was his friend, and said that he needed a babysitter for a week. He arranged it as soon as possible. I don't know how, but my father found a babysitter for me very quickly. The next morning, the doorbell rang. There was a beautiful girl named Olive at the door. She was smiling. She was a babysitter. She entered and sat on the chair. My parents were also sitting there, and all of them were talking. I was watching her from a little distance. My mother told her about my eating habits and all my stuff, etc. My father was continuously gazing at her. She agreed to babysit. After some time, she left. That same night, I saw my mother packing their baggage. I went to my room. My mother came to me. I was very sad because my parents were going to Paris without me. My mother pampered me. Brian, you are such a smart boy. Don't disturb your babysitter, Olive. And don't forget to eat while playing. I love you, my baby. The next morning, Olive came. My parents left the house because they had to go to the airport. Olive was taking care of me. She was not so bad. She used to play with me. The next day, Olive was talking on the phone. I was watching TV. She came to me and said, Brian, it is your father on the call. Talk to him. Then I talked to my father and mother. I gave her back the phone and she continued on the call for an hour. Another day, Olive was in the kitchen. Her phone was on the table. I was watching TV. Then her phone rang. I saw the number on the phone. It was my father's number. I picked up the call. Dad, when will you come home? I miss you. Then Olive came and she snatched the phone from my hand. Then she continued for a long time. All this continued for five days. After five days, early in the morning, I came out of my room. I saw my father sitting on the chair with Olive. I was happy to see him. I hugged him and said, You were supposed to come back after seven days, but you arrived early. Very good. And where's mom? He told me, I reached here last night, but you were sleeping. Your mother is with her sister, Janet. She will be here soon. My father was not looking happy to me. Olive was looking at my father and smiling. I didn't know, but something was weird. My father got close to Olive, hired her, and then went to the office. Olive was looking after me the whole day as before. At night, my father came. We three had dinner. I was missing my mom, her chair was empty. Then after some time, it was time to sleep. Olive said goodnight to me and went to my father's room. My father also followed her and locked the door. It seemed odd. That was my mom's place. I was so sad but helpless. My father used to treat Olive as he treated my mother before. Next day was Sunday. Olive and my father were watching TV <laughs> and laughing. My father said, Brian, we are going out to the amusement park and we'll be back after five or six hours. I said, okay father, I'm going to get ready. Brian, you're not going anywhere. Olive is going with me. Olive said, your breakfast is there in the kitchen with some fruits, ice cream, and snacks are in the refrigerator, okay? Then they both left in the car. After one hour, the doorbell rang. I opened the door. It was Janet. I hugged her and started crying. I looked out here and there and then said, Where's my mom? Why didn't you bring her with you? My father told me that she's with you. What? But I came here to meet you and her. We both were shocked. Then I told her everything that my father said and what they both 
Olive and my father were doing. Then she went to my parents' room and checked something. She found my mom's baggage. Then she said, She's been here. Then she was running all over the house and searching for something. Then finally she went to the basement. I also went there. She screamed to see my mother there. She was dead. Flies and insects were there on her body. It was dreadful. She was in a chair. Her hands were bound with a rope and a tape on her mouth. I was so scared to see her in dirty clothes, messy hair, and injuries on her face. There was so much blood on the ground, which had come from her head. Then Janet called the cops. They reached after some time. One of them asked me about my father and Olive. I told them that they were in an amusement park. The cops reached there and arrested both of them. Then my father told the cops that when they were in Paris, my father made a plan to return after three days on the pretext of his business meeting because he wanted to be with Olive and he fell in love with her. She was very beautiful. Olive also loved him. They used to spend time on the phone for hours. The night they reached home, the same night when my parents were sleeping in the room, my mother woke up in the middle of the night when she saw that my father was not there in the bed. When she came out of the room, she heard sounds from Olive's room. Then she pushed the door harder. My father was on the bed with Olive. My father rushed to my mother. Then Olive hit her with a statue, which was a decoration in that room. Then my father strangled her. Then she died and they both dragged her to the basement. Olive and my father were both charged for the murder of my mother and now have life in prison. I started to live with Janet. How unfortunate was everything for me. I lost my parents. I miss my mom so much. My name is Mariana and I was a school teacher. My husband works in a company. This is an incident when my son Rian was five years old. Due to the job, both of us, husband and wife, were unable to take full care of our son Rian, so we hired a babysitter for him. She was a 25-year-old girl, Mary, who had been taking care of Rian for the last two years. One day when I went to school, some of my fellow teachers were discussing something in the group. When I went to her, one of my companions was crying and she told me that the babysitter who took care of her daughter injured her daughter in a very bad way. Then the school bell rang, class time started, and all the teachers went to their respective classes. I went home, and Mary was right there. Don't know why, I was suspecting her, but from the morning I was worried about the bad babysitter incident. Then she came to me and smiled, and said, Ma'am? I am leaving this job because I'm going to get married in a few days. Find a new babysitter for Rian. I also did not say anything more than that. Only I said, okay, and she left. Then I put up an online post that I need a babysitter for a baby boy. The next day I had to take leave from school to take care of Rian. Then in the morning I got a call from an unknown number. I picked up the call. She said, my name is Nancy, and I am a babysitter. I have been doing this work for the last six years. I gave her my address and asked to come. She arrived after two hours. She was in a black wardrobe, quite simple, but attractive, and I didn't find anything suspicious in her. Rian was playing right there. When Nancy went to Rian, he started crying after seeing her. She said, Rian is crying seeing my new face. I will take care, you don't worry. I was telling Nancy all that day about Rian's habits and all stuff about him. The next morning my husband and I went to our job. Nancy, again in black dress, also came to take care of Rian on time. We were both happy and satisfied with Nancy. Then two days later I noticed a change in Rian. He would sit continuously on a swing with bowed head in the garden outside. He stopped playing, and he didn't even make noise. I started worrying about Rian. When my husband came in the evening, I told him the whole thing. He said that perhaps the health of Rian is not good, 
so take him to the doctor. We consulted the doctor as well, but there was no problem in his health. The next morning when Nancy came, I said, Take good care of Rian and take special care of his food and drink. He has become sluggish. She smiled and said, Okay, ma'am. That day I asked my husband to drop me to school. We were both going in the car. I told him about my fellow teacher's babysitter incident and said, I doubt Nancy. She always wears a black wardrobe. Isn't it strange? He said, Nancy is very simple and naive. She will not do anything wrong with our Rian. You don't be negative. He dropped me at the school. When I reached home, Rian was sleeping. I said to Nancy, Why is Rian sleeping at the moment? She said, Today he was tired of playing, so he fell asleep. I said, Why do you wear black dresses daily? She said with a very weird smile, I like this color. Is there any problem in black color, ma'am? I said, nothing. You may go now. She left and everything seemed doubtful to me. Her way of smiling, gazing, and dressing style, etc. Then I went to check Rian. He had a blanket on his face and as soon as I removed the blanket, I was shocked and scared. Rian's eyes were wide open and he was not even blinking his eyes. He ran screaming and sat on the swing outside in the garden. I was worried. I went to Rian and asked him to come inside. He was not answering me and kept his head bowed. When I put my hand on his shoulder, he bites very hard in my hand. So, Rian's father came from the office and seeing all this, he came to me. Then, Rian screamed and ran inside. I told my husband that something was going wrong. Nancy has done something with Rian. He said, you're right. Now we have to do something. That night, while Rian was sleeping, we put a camera in that room and connected it to the laptop. The next morning, Nancy came and both of us went in the car as usual. But going a little ahead of the house, we stopped the car and turned on the laptop and were looking at live recordings of Rian's room. My husband called the cops and told the whole thing, and in the short time, the car of the cops also came to us there. One of the cops was sitting in the car with us watching the live camera recording. We were very nervous and scared after seeing all that. We saw Nancy go to Rian's room and say something in his ear, and he suddenly stood up in the air for one minute and then fell down on the bed. Nancy closed the window and set the curtains. She gestured with fingers to Rian, and he came to her walking in the air. Rian's feet were not touching the ground. Now Rian lay on the ground. He was unconscious. Nancy raised both hands and started chanting something. Her shadow was falling on the wall, which suddenly became very large. It seemed like she was calling evil spirits. Her face also changed. Her skin became very rough and dirty. Her eyes became absolutely red. Actually, she was doing black magic. Yes, she was calling evil powers. The curtains of the room and all the stuff kept there started moving and falling. She then applied a cut to her wrist with a knife and spilled some drops of her blood on Rian. Rian was screaming. <laughs> then my husband and the cops ran into the house and went to that room. It was locked from inside. One of the cops pushed that door again and again, then it broke. Nancy had a big knife in her hand. She attacked one. She was attacking everyone like a crazy person. Then one of the cops picked up a vase on the side and hit Nancy's head. She fainted and fell there. She was just injured. The cops had tied her with many tools and ropes. I took Rian in my lap and said sorry to him. He had become very weak. It was later discovered that Nancy used children to try new experiments in black magic. That is why she used to implicate children by becoming a fake babysitter. Later, she was admitted to a mental asylum for treatment. From that day itself, I had left my teacher job, and then I started taking care of Rian. I recently took a job in a tea garden. I am a 28-year-old male. I had to shift to this small hill station to work as a tea estate manager. My mom was worried, as I'll be living completely alone, that too in a far away hill station, but I always enjoyed being alone. 
I had a girlfriend, but we broke up a few years back. Since then, I preferred being single until I really met someone interesting. So, back to the story. One Sunday morning, I reached the tea garden. Another employee named Mr. Duff showed me the entire area and took me to the bungalow where I will be staying. The bungalow was on top of a hill. There was nothing around the house except for huge mountains and steep valleys. The view from my bedroom window was breathtaking. I used to roam around the tea estate and look after the production and works there. The daytimes were busy enough, but the nights were filled with silence. Except for the blowing of the winds and chirping of crickets, there was not a single sound after the sun was set. The first week went without any trouble, and I started enjoying my life in solitude, but suddenly things took a different turn. One night, I woke up hearing someone humming in a low voice. I tried to hear carefully. It was a woman's voice. The woman was humming a weird tune somewhere near the bungalow. The sound was coming from outside, so there's nothing much I could do about it. I thought it might be some village girl, but it felt odd that she's awake and roaming in the hills during midnight. I ignored it and went back to sleep. The next day, I finished my work early and decided to head back to finish some important paperwork. I started walking towards the exit gate of the garden. Mr. Duff accompanied me on the way. As we walked between the tea garden, I asked, Is there any village nearby the bungalow, Mr. Duff? He looked at me with a confused face and said, Nope, no one lives near the bungalow. But why'd you ask? I said, Nothing. It's just last night a girl was singing in the valley. I could hear her from the bedroom. Not actually singing, rather humming a very mysterious tune. Mr. Duff suddenly became a bit awkward and said, Well, you must have heard the night owl or some other animal howling. In hills, sounds echo a lot. <laughs> I'm sure it was nothing. He didn't speak the entire way, and I returned home with a curious feeling in my heart. That night, after dinner, I decided if I hear the humming tune tonight, I will come out of the house and see for myself. I did, as planned. Around 2 a.m., the humming tune in the same female voice took place. I tiptoed to the bedroom balcony. The chilly wind and fog were all over the valley. As far as my eyes went, I could only see huge mountains and pale moonlight flooding all over the valley. Suddenly, something caught my eye. As I turned towards the gate of the bungalow, I saw a village girl standing near it. She was looking directly at me, smiling. There was something in her smile that made my senses numb. I don't know how long I stood there staring at her. She hummed the tune again and started to call me, gesturing her hand. I asked in a loud voice, Hello, do you need any help? Are you all right? She didn't say anything, just stood there and smiled. I could tell she was extremely beautiful, but something about her appearance made her appear like a mystery. Her long hair was floating in the wind. She again called me, and this time I couldn't resist any more. I came out of the house and opened the gate. The girl was now standing at about 10 to 15 hands distance from me. I was feeling very cold, but something kept telling me in my ears that I needed to follow her. The girl chuckled, and her laugh echoed in the entire valley. She then said, I am lost. I'm trying to find my way in the dark. Can you help me? There was no way I could say no to her, so I just nodded my head. She again said in her crystal clear voice, My house is down the valley, and I am scared to go alone. Would you accompany me there? I don't know what happened before I could say yes. My legs just started to walk with her own. The girl was walking in front of me while humming her magical tune, and I was following her like a child with an empty mind. The way she walked, it felt like she was almost floating in the air. Her feet didn't touch the ground for once. We were going on like this when she stopped humming, and suddenly my eyes went ahead. My blood rushed to my face as I discovered she was walking towards the steep edge of the valley. Not just that, she was pulling me with her supernatural power all this way. I realized if I kept following her like this, my body will fall from this thousand-foot deep valley and no one will ever find a single trace of me. I said in a panicked voice, Where, where are you taking me? She suddenly stopped and turned backward. Her pretty face was now the face 
of a demon. Her eyes were coming out, and the skin on her face was rotten, and bones were visible underneath. She started to laugh in her demonic voice, and she grasped my hand. I started to scream and free myself from her grasp, but she just kept pulling me and pulling me towards the edge. I realized my end was near, and we were almost at the edge when someone pulled my collar from the other side. As I started to faint out of shock, I, I saw with my fading eyes it was Mr. Duff. A day later, I regained my consciousness. Mr. Duff was sitting near my bed, and a doctor was checking my pulse. Mr. Duff told me, This place is cursed, sir. A long time back, a village girl committed suicide from the mountain edge near the bungalow. Since then, her spirit haunts this place and tries to lure men down the valley. I thought you might fall in her trap, so I came to your bungalow last night. I'm sorry. I should have told you sooner. I, I didn't say a single word to him. Just waited to get better and then left the job immediately. I am never going back to the haunted reaper ever again. But her fairy-like tune still echoes in my ears at night. I used to study in a college. Our financial condition was not good. That is why I used to study during the day and in the evening used to work part-time at a pizza shop. My job shift was from 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. in the evening. One night, a pizza order arrived at 11.10 p.m. There is an apartment 20 to 25 minutes away from here. Deliver pizza there and go straight home. But boss, that area is the exact opposite of my house. It's now 11.15 p.m. I won't have time to make pizza and deliver it until 12 o'clock. And it will be about 1 o'clock when I get back home. Look, this is your job. You have to do it. I'll pay you extra for this. After 15 minutes, I took the pizza and got on my bike for delivery. I received a pizza delivery order to an apartment. I reached the apartment at 11.55 at night. I had to deliver the pizza to room number 301. I went to the lift. Room number 301 was locked. I took out the mobile from my pocket to call the customer. What's this? The mobile's been switched off. Then I got confused a bit. I thought, maybe the room number is not 301, that the room number will be 310. I made a mistake about the digit. Now I started to move towards room number 310. The room was on the next floor. I started going up from the stairs. It was quite dark there. The gallery there was also quite dark. I was feeling a little scared. I stood outside room number 310 and knocked on the door. Hello? Is anyone inside? Did you order a pizza? There was no response from any of the room. When I knocked on the door a little harder, it opened. I went inside. Everything was scattered there. So many spider webs were there. I tried to turn on the light, but it did not. I was feeling very scared. I went inside a little bit and the curtains were flying due to the very strong wind there. While looking at the room, I looked towards a window and there was a very terrible looking woman standing at the window. I said in a trembling voice, Ma'am, what are you doing here at the window? Did you order a pizza? Her mouth was tilted down. She did not answer and I walked in a little further. Hello, ma'am? Do you need any help, ma'am? I took a step forward. The woman turned her face up and she jumped down the window screaming out loud. It was very scary. She had deep wounds on her face and blood was coming. I was scared too much. When I looked down from the window there was no one there. I got drenched with sweat and very quickly left the pizza and got out of there. I ran towards the lift, but the lift of that floor was not working. I ran to the ninth floor and saw that there was a lift going down. I quickly went into it and came out of the apartment and ran away on my bike. I was riding a bike at a very high speed. The roads were deserted. After some time, I turned my face slightly to the side. Then the same terrible woman was running at full speed with my bike. I was scared and shocked. She was not a living lady. She was a ghost. My senses were blown away. I could see my death. A short distance away, I saw a church. I stopped my bike and went inside the church. Shortly thereafter, I fell asleep. And in the morning, the father of the church woke me up. 
What happened, son? Have a nightmare? Yes, father. It was the same as a nightmare. I went home and quit that job. I had the habit of sleeping late as my exams were around the corner. Never before had I ever felt this weird sense of discomfort that I was feeling that night. I lived in the western suburbs of the city and thus my house was remotely situated. It was not often that I was scared of sleeping alone, but that day was just different. There were so many things on my mind about my work that I forgot to look at the window of my room. A cold breeze blew inside the room and made me aware of the fact that the window was open. I looked outside the window and stared into complete darkness. Usually there was a lamp at the corner of the street that burnt bright and allowed me to look outside my window clearly, but that day there was simply no visibility. As my phone pinged and I went ahead to reach my phone, I sensed something moving outside the window. I looked again, but everything was still outside. Disregarding this, I checked my messages and rolled my eyes. It was the corona alert once again. This was the fifth time I was receiving the message to be aware of the corona in your house. How would corona even enter my house? I was working from home. As I pondered upon the message, something crashed loudly outside in the alley. I rushed to see if there was some cat in the trash cans making the havoc, but the alley was completely empty. I came back inside to find this weird silhouette of a man standing in my living room. The body of the man looked completely normal, but he was wearing something circular on his head. I was afraid to approach the person, but I also thought that it might be one of my friends pulling a prank on me. I decided to muster the courage and confront the stranger in my house. Who are you? I asked as my voice shook a little. What are you doing in my house? The man came closer a few steps, and a recording started playing in the voice of Cardi B. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! If this was a prank, it was not funny at all. My legs shivered a little as the man started approaching me with a knife in his hand. I grabbed the phone and ran into my room, locking the doors from the inside. I tried calling the cops, but there was no signal on my phone. In panic, I tried to make sense of the message I had received earlier. Did the authorities know that a vandal was roaming the streets pretending to be coronavirus? Is this what they meant when they asked me not to let the disease enter the house? These thoughts rushed through my brain as the door of my room banged loudly. The phone slipped through my hands and on the floor as the banging stopped. I suddenly realized that the window to my room was still open. I ran to close the window, but it was too late. The man was already inside and was now approaching me threateningly. I searched for a weapon to use against the assailant, but my brain froze for a few minutes. My last resort was running towards the bathroom, but before I could do so, a strong arm grabbed me and was pulling me towards it. I kicked and pushed, but the man was too strong. He was trying to say something, but I could not make sense of it in the chaos. After a long struggle, I was too tired to fight anymore. I gave up and listened to what the man had to say. Sally, it's me, Parker, he said in a robotic voice. I am stuck in my Halloween costume. Can you please use this knife to rip it off? The next time my eyes opened, I was lying in a hospital with Parker standing beside my bed. What happened? he asked anxiously. You scared the hell out of me, I said irritably. You are the worst brother ever. I realize I shouldn't have played that prank on you, but I was genuinely stuck. Just never do it again, okay? Sure. My name is Hannah. I used to live with my parents. It was a matter of those days when I was studying in college. Then the college holidays were going on and I used to work part-time at a pizza shop. I used to be on the job from 4 to 10 p.m. in the evening. Once on a Sunday, I was playing a game on my mobile. Then in it, again and again, an ad named OnlyFans was visible, which was related to earning money. I also wanted to earn money, so I was attracted to seeing that ad again and again. I clicked on it. It had hot pics and videos of many girls and their fans had comments. The sign-in option was also visible there, so I created my profile on it. 
It used to earn on adding new fans and more fans were also added on uploading photos. I also clicked some of my hot pics, took some selfies and uploaded them. Text messages started coming to me, like beautiful, hot, sexy, cute, etc. I was very happy. The next day, I shared my live video while going for duty at the pizza shop. While working at the pizza shop, I uploaded a few of my pics in several poses. A friend of mine named Chelsea, who works with me, interrupted me and said, What are you doing? Have you gone mad? Just been busy taking photos on the phone since morning. What is going on? And I just ignored her with looks. On reaching home that night, I was making a few hot poses in a bikini in my room, clicking pics with a selfie stick. Then suddenly my mother came to my room. She shouted at me, Shameless girl, what the hell are you doing? I quickly dressed and then my father also came. My mother told the whole thing to my father. My father scolded me and said, You do all this by going somewhere else. I got very angry. At the same time, I called my friend Chelsea and said, I'm coming to you. She lived in a separate rental house from her parents. I went to stay at her house. My same routine continued for two days. Using the phone during the day, clicking pics, going to the job in the evening and coming back and passing time on the phone again. The next day, after returning home at 10 p.m., before entering home, I clicked my selfie outside the house. In my room, I was using OnlyFans app and got a message from a boy named Nikolai. Hi, beautiful. Hey. You are really beautiful. Thank you. You work at a pizza shop. Yeah. You have seen my pics at the pizza shop. No, I saw you. When? Daily. Do you work somewhere near that pizza shop? No, I have my own business. Leave this topic. Send me some hot pics of yours. Excuse me. First tell me about you. I said send some pics and send $20. He sent me his account number. Are you kidding me? Why should I send money? You should send me money. He sent me a pic of mine sitting in that pizza shop. It was two days old and not clicked by me. How is this? How dare you? Who are you and why did you click my pic? He sent me my pic of yesterday at my friend's house. I was sitting in the garden outside the house. This is so beautiful. What do you want? Just you and money. He sent me a pic with my friend Chelsea of today at noon, sitting in the living area. Your friend is also beautiful, but you are more. I panicked. I called Chelsea to come to me. She was not at home at the time. She was at a party and not responding to my call. He sent me a pic of mine lying on the bed and using the phone. It was a five-minute old pic. I was sweating and panicked. I just turned and looked at the window. It was open. That pic was taken from there. The person was at the window five minutes ago. When I went to close the window, suddenly a strange-looking man came to the window. I screamed loudly and left the room and hid in a kitchen cupboard. I put my hands over my mouth so that there was no noise. He was speaking after saying my name. Hannah, come to me. Where did you hide? He was coming out of the room. I was unable to speak, so I couldn't call the police. Then I sent a text message to my father and mother's phone that a stranger has entered forcefully here, and I hid in the kitchen cupboard. Help me, please. Then I also called my parents again and again so that they would see my message. After two minutes, my father replied, Don't you worry. We're coming, and I've called the cops. Stay there. By now, that unknown man was roaming all over the house and was calling my name. After some time, the siren of the police van was heard. The cops came to the house and my parents also came. They were looking for that man everywhere, but he could not be found. One of them started questioning me about how the man looked. Did I ever see him? Was he a friend of mine? I had never seen that person before. That man seemed to be a psycho. I told how the whole thing had started after creating a profile on an app named OnlyFans. That man followed me everywhere and secretly clicked my photos, but I had never seen him in front of me. After he left, I apologized to my parents and went back to my home. While I was sleeping, I was thinking about all this. 
Then I remembered when I clicked my pick outside Chelsea's house, which also had a pic of the board behind me, from which he must have taken my address, and from the pics of the pizza shop, he found that I worked at that shop. I just deleted all my pics from OnlyFans, and also deleted my account. I changed my job, and after that, I never saw that man again. I still remember the day so vividly when I ended up in my friend Josie's basement with a bunch of our friends playing Truth or Dare. I'm Mindy, 18, and recently graduated high school. It was our graduation party, and we all were drunk or stoned, so instead of dancing the night off, we all decided to make it a bit more crazy by playing Truth or Dare before everyone goes off to college. When it was my turn, I chose Dare, just for the thrill of it. We all were adults, so dares were daring. One of my friends suggested that I open an OnlyFans account, run it for six months, and then throw a great party with the earned money when we all returned to town for our first semester break. Trust me, at that time it sounded like a pretty good idea to earn more money. And who doesn't like parties? We were teens, pretty open to everything. So the next day I signed up for an OnlyFans account and started posting content. At first it was pretty innocent photos of me, sitting in a park, driving, etc., I also did some live streaming while I packed for college. But once I was settled in my college dorm, I decided to post some explicit content. I had a roommate named Rhea. She was pretty nerdy and had no social life and interests besides studying all day. So most of the time she was in the library studying or busy with her part-time job at a local bookstore, which left the whole dorm to me. Each day after lectures, I used to do myself up and click cute and sexy pictures of myself. My fan following was increasing day by day, and more and more people were getting my paid subscription. I was pretty famous on the site, and was making a good part-time income without doing any part-time job at all. My live streams were more often, and I interacted with my fans as frequently as I could. My roommate had her own idea about my OnlyFans account, and tried to talk me out of it a lot of times. But my increasing bank balance helped me erase all her lectures from my mind pretty easily. She was a bore anyway. In one of my fan interactions, I was answering some usual fan questions when a direct message popped up on my screen. Being a regular user, I read the message and was happy to see one more fan reaching out to me with praise and support. So I decided to interact with this fan. It turned out to be a lady named Sia, in her late 30s, looking for advice and guidance on how to start an OnlyFans account, and had been my follower for a few months. I gave her a few tips, thinking it to be a casual interaction, but then I was naive and did not know the world so well. I did not think twice about why a married woman with two kids wanted to start an OnlyFans account. She had shared a lot of information about her personal life with me. Quickly, we became friends. She gave me some career and life advice while I taught her to pose and posts and edit them with the latest filters. We did share a lot of personal information, so she knows where I lived, studied, my family, friends, etc., and vice versa. I even told her how I started an OnlyFans account as a dare. I thought I had found a friend through this site. My account was thriving. I was making twice as much as Rhea made in her part-time job at the bookstore. My content on OnlyFans was becoming more adult and revealing as the time passed. It just added more followers and paid subscribers, which in turn brought more money. It had been four months since I started my account, and one day, one more direct message popped on my account while I was active. It was from a man called Dave. He said, Hey Mindy, you're gorgeous. I've been your follower from day one and wanted to interact with you for a long time, but I was kind of shy. I thought it was a cute text, so I quickly replied in a flirty tone saying, Hey Dave, now that you're interacting with me, why don't you tell me how gorgeous I am? He replied within seconds with praises and encouragement for my career. I was happy to hear from him. Suddenly, his questions started getting a bit personal, so I kept replying with minimum words and finally deciding to log out of my account as I quickly became tired of answering his nonstop questions. While I was pressing the logout button, the last message popped up from Dave asking me to go out with him. Mostly, all of my fans were local or from towns nearby, so I knew Dave lived nearby, maybe in a neighboring town. That night, I also got several messages from Sia asking to help her shop for something more revealing online. So I and Sia ended up choosing outfits for her online. 
After that day, Dave never messaged me. C and I had also planned to meet up at her house a couple of days later. I was about to visit her on the weekend for lunch with her family. When I reached her house, it was exactly as it was from the pictures she sent me. I knocked on the door, and a smiling Sia opened the door. I entered the house, finally happy to see my online friend in person. But one thing was off. Her family was missing. When I asked, she told me her kids were at a friend's birthday party, and her husband had last-minute work at the office. So it was just us. We had lunch and chatted a lot. Once lunch was done, she offered me a house tour. As I was going through her study, a single photo stole my breath away. I quickly recognized the person from his profile photo online. It was Dave, but the surprising thing was, it was Sia in his wedding photo. I turned around only to see Sia standing with a knife in her hand, looking at me with disgust. I quickly pieced two and two together, but before I could say a word, Sia said, "You ruined it, my marriage. He loved you, not me. Followed your account daily. When I tried to dress up like you." Be like you. He hated me. He only ever loved you, so I had to do it. I was confused by what she meant by it. She continued holding the knife pointed at me. I killed the man I loved, my husband, because for him I wasn't enough, and now you need to die too to pay for it. She screamed and rushed at me, but fortunately I was quicker. I rushed out of the study window into the lawn. Unlocked my car and drove away. I reported this incident and got Sia arrested for an attempted murder. I deleted the account and focused on my college, and suggest no one join OnlyFan ever. My name is Noah. I am schoolteacher. My school is situated in an isolated area out of the city. This incident happened last year. I used to teach in tenth class in school. The normal life of routine was going on. One day, an advertisement of the vacancy of chemistry teacher was published in the newspaper for our school. Then, on the same day, a man came for the interview for the job of school teacher. His name was Jacob. He went to the principal's office. I was there too. It was his first day at school. He wore formal clothes. He was wearing glasses, looking very simple. He carried a big black bag on his shoulders. The principal asked him some questions. He was very smart and answered every question appropriately. He was appointed as a chemistry teacher. The next day, he started working as a teacher. He had become friendly with me. He used to say hello to me as soon as he came to school. We both got along. After two days, we were having lunch in the staff room. His phone was kept there on the table. His phone rang. The number of an outer country was being shown on the screen. He quickly covered the screen with his hand and got up from there and went a short distance away and started talking on the phone, standing near the window. His facial expressions had changed. He looked so fake, but I didn't understand anything at that time. After five minutes, he came back and sat down. I asked, "Who called you? You seem upset." Jacob replied, "My wife had a call. She belongs to another country, and now she wants to divorce me." I said, "I'm sorry." I thought I was unnecessarily doubting him. The man was already upset. One day, he took the students of his class to the chemistry lab. The recess period had started. All the children were in the cafeteria and in the garden. All the teachers were also in the staff room, but Jacob was not there. I went to the chemistry lab. There was a small storeroom inside the chemistry lab, in which the stock of chemicals and equipment was kept. It was normally closed. It was opened only when needed. When I went there, Jacob was closing that storeroom. I asked Jacob, "Why don't you come for lunch?" He just about to come. Some chemicals were reduced in the lab here. That's why I was taking chemicals from the storeroom. He came to me, saying, "Let's go for lunch." When I went back to class after lunch, there was a lot of noise among the children. 
I told him to shut up and asked what happened. The student said, Sir, I can't find my friend Shane. I was shocked. I asked, What do you mean? Did he come to school today? The student said, Yes, he was here before recess. I was having lunch and playing during recess, so I didn't pay attention, but he was not with me, even at that time. During this, a lot of noise started coming from other areas of the school as well. I ran there, and some teachers were also present there, but Jacob was not. Then it was found that four students were missing from there too. There was noise in the whole school. I went to the principal's office. There, I started talking about it. Only then the voices started coming from the main door of the school. The main door of the school was very large, and it was kept closed during school time, so that students could not go out during school time. Two men were coming in from over the door with guns in their hands. They wore black clothes, and their faces were covered with masks. The guard sitting there was also killed. We got scared. The principal announced over the speakers that terrorists have entered the school, and the school should be locked down immediately. All teachers, go to the classroom with your students and lock the room. There were speakers everywhere in the school, due to which this information reached everyone. I ran towards my classroom with the principal. All the students and teachers were running here and there, locking themselves in their classrooms. I quickly took my students to class and locked the door from inside. There was glass on the door. I saw that four students were still out. He was knocking on the classroom, but no one was opening the door. I heard gunshots. I told the principal, You take care of these children. Quickly call the cops. I will go out and save their lives. I opened the door and went out. I went to those four students. Just then, a terrorist came there. There was the chemistry lab nearby. I went with those students to the same lab and locked the door. I put tables and chairs in front of the door. I pulled out my phone to call the cops, but the signal was not reaching my phone. Perhaps the terrorists had put jammers in the school so that no one could call the cops. That is why there was no signal on my phone. Then a terrorist came to our door and started banging. He was trying hard to break the glass of the door. There were many chemicals in the lab. A chemical was kept there on which it was written, Do not touch directly. It is harmful. When I dropped it lightly on the ground, a lot of hot smoke came out of it. But that was very little. When I quickly opened the lab storeroom, I was shocked to see the five students who were missing were there in the storeroom. Their hands were tied, and there were bandages on their mouths too. I asked other students to free them, and I was looking for the same chemical. I found a lot. I took ten empty bottles and put chemicals in all of them and gave each bottle to all the students. The door was in the middle of the classroom. On both sides, the students and I just stood with bottles of chemicals. The terrorist was still banging on the door. Then the glass broke, and the tables and chairs lying in front of the door also started falling. As soon as he opened the door, we dropped that harmful chemical on him, and it was burning, and he started shouting loudly. I hit the chair on his head, and he fainted. I took off his mask. It was Jacob. Then I picked up his gun. I asked those students to hide in the storeroom. I put on Jacob's mask and clothes. I also looked terrorist now and sneaked out into the corridor. There was no one there. I went further, then another terrorist came there. He said to me, Jacob, come to the chemistry lab. We have to take those five kids from here. Hurry up. He was running towards the chemistry lab. I was after him. As soon as he reached there, he saw Jacob lying unconscious. I shot him in the leg. He fell there and started screaming. I then hit the chair on his head as well. He fainted. I went to the principal's office and from there announced that it's nowhere here. You all come out of the classrooms. Both the terrorists are in an unconscious state. Then all teachers and students came out. There was a jammer on the wall at one place, due to which our phones were not working. I broke that jammer and then called the cops. In a while, the cops came and arrested both of them. 
Investigation revealed that Jacob was a terrorist, and he also wanted to take those five children to make them terrorists. By the grace of God, everyone survived that day, but the gatekeeper had lost his life. It was a very dangerous and scary incident. My name is James. I'm studying in the first year of graduation. I've had a few unforgettable experiences in my past. This story was during my 10th standard. I had seen a school going into lockdown for the first time. I used to be a naughty kid in school. I always used to prank my fellow students and sometimes even the teachers. Everyone was fed up with my actions. I used to go to the principal's office daily as everyone used to complain about me. The principal gave me a warning most of the time and he even called my parents and said that if I didn't change my behavior, they'd expel me from school. I cared little and continued with my pranks. One day I pranked one of my classmates. It was then that things got worse for me. He was one of the most studious students and he was the teacher's favorite. I pranked him using a ghost mask and he was so afraid that he fainted and was admitted into the hospital. This led me to the principal's office and he scolded me and immediately called my parents. When they came, he told them about this incident and said that I was expelled from the school. Then my parents took me home. My parents were very furious at what I had done and scolded me. They said that I should not have done this. Then they decided to send me to a boarding school. I was shocked at their decision and told them that I'll not go to any boarding school. But eventually, I had to go to a boarding school. This school had very strict rules, and those who didn't follow them were punished. This school had a history of changing very naughty students into decent ones. I was not at all happy, but no one bothered about me. I was very sad, but my parents didn't listen to me, and they left me there alone. I burst into tears when they left. I was crying loudly. I was taken to my room, and the warden asked me to get ready fast, as I have to attend classes. Then he went away. I was alone in the room and was crying out loud. I got ready, but I was still crying. Suddenly, I heard weird noises. It was like someone calling my name, but in a slow, ghostly sound. Then my heart skipped a beat. I suddenly stopped crying and ran away towards the classroom. I went inside the class and introduced myself to the teacher and the class. Then the rest of the class also introduced themselves. I was not paying attention, as I was still thinking about those noises. Then the class finished, and we went to our room. It was time to eat, and everyone was going for dinner. But I told them that I'm not feeling hungry, and asked them to go. Then I was alone in the room, and was thinking about my parents, and weeping. Suddenly, I heard the same noises again. I was terrified and tried to run, but I fell. Then I felt someone was coming towards me. At this moment, I went numb and couldn't do anything. Then I fainted, and I fell there. When I woke up, I saw that I was lying on the bed, and the boys and the warden surrounded me. They asked what happened to me, but I wasn't able to tell them anything. I was very afraid. Then the warden asked everyone to sleep, and he left. The next morning, my parents called me, and I was talking to them. They asked me how the school was and all. I said everything was fine, in a low tone. They asked me the reason for my strange behavior and asked if something was wrong. I told them everything that had happened about the voice I was hearing and said that I'm very much afraid. I asked them to take me away, but they thought it was one of my pranks trying to get out of the school. I told them that I was telling the truth, but they didn't listen and cut the call. I was sad after this and went to my class after hanging up on the phone. In class, I was sitting and the class was going on. Then suddenly we heard an announcement. The school is going into lockdown. It was the principal and he said that a psychopath had attacked our school and for the safety of the students, the school is going into lockdown. He also said that the police have been informed and they'll be here as soon as possible. Hearing this, the teacher immediately ran to the door and closed it. He also closed the windows. He asked the students to hide under the tables. We did the same. 
Suddenly, the lights started going on and off. Thunders started rumbling, and the weather changed completely. Then I heard the voice that had been haunting me, and went to the teacher and asked if he heard the voice. The teacher said that he didn't hear anything, and asked me to go and hide under the table. But the voice was loud, and could be heard clearly. Then I thought of finding out the truth about this voice. I opened the door and banged it hard. The door got jammed, but still I ran to find out who it was. When I came out, I found out that the voice was coming from the classroom towards the end of the corridor. I ran towards it down the corridor, but then a very strange thing happened. When I was running down the corridor, it felt like I was stuck in one place, but I was running. Then I saw a rat and turned there, but to my surprise, here also the corridor looked the same. This happened for some time, and I was exhausted. Then I heard the voice and found out that it was coming from behind. I turned suddenly, but could not find anyone. Now I was afraid of what was happening, I decided to run away from there. I kept running for some time, but eventually I reached the same place again and again. I didn't know what was happening. Then, suddenly, I stopped as I felt someone was coming towards me from behind. I was terrified and turned around to see who it was. Then I finally saw that a man was standing there holding a knife pointed towards me. I was in shock seeing a man like that. Then he started coming towards me. Then I tried to run away from there. As I tried to run, my leg slipped and I fell to the floor. Then I tried to get up and run, but the man came and sat on my chest. His eyes were blood red. I was under him and he was about to stab me with a knife. But in the meantime, the police arrived and shot him in his hand. Then the knife fell aside. Then the police officer came towards us immediately and caught the psycho. My life was saved. The police said the psycho ran away from the mental asylum and was attacking everyone with the knife. Then they took him away. I thought that now everything would return to normal, but even after the psycho was caught, I could still hear the weird sounds. After this, I fainted and fell on the floor. Then, when I woke up, the warden was sitting there, and he asked me what had happened to me. But I couldn't utter a word, and was still afraid of what had happened. Seeing me like this, the warden called my parents. Next time when I woke up, I found that my parents were there. They got worried seeing me like that. I asked them to take me away from there, and kept crying. Seeing me like that, they even decided that I shouldn't be there, and they took me away. This incident still haunts me. I still think about whose voice that was, and why only I could hear it. But eventually, I let it go out of my mind. But memories of the past days stay always with us, especially the bad ones.